You know what goes great with Mountain Dew? Nuts. I'm here with Elijah. He's been working, he's one of our senior engineers. He's working on formations. Now, as you can imagine, formations can be simple or they can be complex. What are they? Let's talk to Elijah and find out. In our previous games, we've had uh, many ways of trying to solve the formation problem. We have different units that prefer to be in the back or prefer to be in the front, or um, they have different sizes. So you have like a large, um, huge mech or a large elephant, or you know, basically, uh, how do you keep uh, a formation shape when there's all these different factors? With the old uh, technology, you would always be uh, in a square or a rectangle, and um, uh, we wanted to be more uh, expressive. We wanted to do uh, formations that uh, weren't just squares. We want to do things like have a column or have a double column. Um, so you basically drop down um, a polygon and uh, the polygon expresses the shape that you would like to have. Now I see here you've got different size circles so those are for the small units and then you've got the bigger size units and then that big yellow circle might be for like the war bore or something really big in the formation. They prefer to be in the back, but since they're not with anybody else, you know, they're in the front. But if you bring in some more guys, you bring in some more guys, and yay! <laughs> oh, yeah, excuse me. What are you doing? I'm getting some nuts. Welcome to another exciting episode of Cracked Out Mailbag. Uh, we have a question here from Sean who says, will there be chickens in Kings and Castles? You know, I just had a meeting the other day and I said, we really need to put chickens in the game and so there will be chickens. Uh, Christian who asks, in regards to Kings and Castles, what type of DRM are you looking at? We are using the standard Steam DRM, just like we did with Supreme Commander 2. Uh, Peter says, um, hey, I just saw video blog number 14. He loved it, and uh, he, he asked a question regarding those soldiers that were attacking the house, and he wondered uh, what's up with that gap. All placeholder stuff, this is very early in the game. Uh, those soldiers in the final game will actually go up and be attacking straight on the buildings or the other or the other units in the game. So, all right, that's another exciting episode of Cracked Out Mailbag. Can I get one of those high fives? <laughs> She's funnier than me. I hate her. It's my lunch. There are days, and then there are days. Did you have cake? I did. How was the cake? It was great. I had my cake and I ate it too. We're here live to check out the king from Kings and Castles. Let's visit Kevin. Kevin Pun, how are you today, buddy? Great. They want to know where the king is in Kings and Castles. Wow. So I thought, you know, since you're making the king, we should show them. Yeah, so I drew the concept of the king. That's um, great. Here it is. Um, and you drew it on like a, a weird horizontal piece of paper that looks like it's cut off. Is that <laughs> what, what, what's really happening, Kevin, in the dark and twisted world of, of art artistry? I've just been working on the king um, based on you know the, this concept, and I've been <clears throat> just slowly building you know the, the different pieces. You know, this is almost like a, a gray gray box model. Mm -hmm but uh, with a little bit more detail than what we have done in the past. We wanted to put something in there that had a little more, uh, a little more a character and a little more detail because we, we, you know, we really need people to understand how important the king is. Also the proportion, you know, um, 
really try to um, make all the all the edges extra thick and juicy so that you know when you zoom out um, you know they read well <laughs> that was the king okay so hey Mike we're here um, to uh, introduce you to the world I don't think anyone's met you before nope. Mike Robbins AI guru responsible for some of the incredible AI work here at Gaspar games and uh, uh, many of the people on the internet know you as Saurian. That's correct. Right, which is very, very cool. How you doing today? Doing good. How you doing? Good, good. So what, have you got anything awesome and cool to show us? I have something incredibly awesome to show you. No. I can actually teleport something from one place in the world to some place completely different. If I could go anywhere in the world, I would want to go to the Nut Machine. <laughs> I can't believe that worked. <laughs> that was, was nutty. nutty. I didn't get hardly any nuts. I got banana. I got like a almond. And I got some peanuts and a raisin. Are you ready for another exciting episode of Cracked out. Mailbag. Okay, we got a guy in Des Moines, Iowa. Hey there, why do corpses disappear into the ground? Um, it's not very realistic. And uh, uh, is there an option to have the corpses left behind? Uh, so when you finish a battle, uh, you know you've done a good job. Uh, the games that I've designed over the years, uh, we tend to leave the corpses on the field. Uh, we leave wreckage behind, but at some point you have to start to get rid of the wreckage, you have to start getting rid of the corpses because as these pile up, um, what happens is it slows down the performance of the game. And I, but we'll leave as many corpses around as we can, absolutely, because it looks way better. Uh, Tim asks, uh, will the melee soldiers be able to hunker behind their shields um, and still be movable uh, to block incoming damage and protect the units behind them? We actually are working with systems where the sh soldiers can take their shields and raise them and actually go into the turtle formation. So that's something that we're pretty excited about. Uh, Mark asks, are castles going to be upgradable, customizable, like a citadel and demigod? Our castles uh, start very, very uh, sort of humble and small because your kingdom is just starting out. And as you invest more and more uh, in your castles, either through gold and stone, uh, is the idea, the, the castle gets bigger and bigger and bigger in our, and the objective is to create these incredibly huge, fantastic castles that are bigger than anything anyone's ever seen in an RTS before. Another one here, uh, who, who shall remain anonymous uh, by request, has said, uh, will the different formations offer special advantages? This is exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about those formations and those shield configurations uh, creating a, um, uh, a much more defensible position. This is key to melee combat, and if you have a whole line of those soldiers and they've all got their shields out, um, then really what you create is a wall, and that's really important, and so we hope to get that in there. And that's another exciting episode. <laughs> of Cracked Out Mailbag. <laughs> it's my lunch. Let me try this again, because that was really weird. Have some cake. Could you tell us about the talent tree for the king? Hold on. So this talent tree shows some of the abilities that the king has. Um, all of the art right, in, uh, right now is placeholder, and it basically uh, gives us a visualization of what these things do. So as you gain levels, you will get uh, talent points that you can spend to buy any of these talents. And these talents will include things that will increase your health, maybe increase the rate at which you gain experience, um, things like that. Um, yes. Thank you very much. Send us your video high five to cracked out at gaspower.com. Send us a video of you doing a high five. We want your high five. Really? Yeah. Just out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh! My lunch. <laughs>